Okay, so welcome back. So today we have the second uh, guest lecture also from Jason. Uh, it's a fairly exciting set of things that uh, we'll, we'll get you all involved with and also an exercise in sketching involved that uh, Jason will be talking about. First of all, I wanted to just mention to you that uh, myself, uh, in terms of my own education and career, uh, was interested always in sketching but never learned it uh, in, a, in a way that I could use it as a, as a tool in design. And it turned out that during grad school, so it's not too late to um, you know, learn sketching for all of you. Uh, in the early stages of my grad school, I did a, a couple of classes in product rendering with markers and so on. And it turned out at the same time, I was also designing a machine and doing a lot of courses in geometry and so on. So I found it extremely useful in my early stages and continue to use it um, after that, after coming to Purdue and, and so on and so forth. Um, so I think it's going to help all of you and um, hopefully Jason's lecture today will, will build something that you will take take away and, and use it um, also in your rest of your career. So I wanted to um, welcome Jason again. So thanks for uh, doing this uh, exercise. Also, um, for off-campus students, uh, Jason will have some tips on how you can maybe hold off as you're starting and get prepared for joining this in a more um, active manner. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Right. Yeah, good morning. Thank you guys for braving the very cold weather out there. Um, and for those off campus, uh, you know, they're probably sitting in their underwear, you know, getting to watch this. So you're very brave, and I appreciate that. So uh, this is me again. Um, feel free to email me if you guys have questions or anything. Uh, and just really quick, I wanted to remind you guys, this is what we talked about last time, right? Late stage uh, concepting, concept development is this iterative process. Incremental design to evolutionary design to revolutionary design. And you kind of got to go through the discipline to get there. And that process sometimes is difficult. Uh, your energy level drops for a large portion of any initiative that you're involved with, especially including product development. And so being disciplined to make it through this trough is um, really necessary. And uh, remember, this was my recommendation on um, your motivation to make it through that trough. So before you get in, make sure your have to has evolved to a want to. And if possible, let that evolve to a can't not, okay? This is really uh, where I think you need to be, in my opinion, to make it through that trough, okay? So that's where we've come so far. And today, what I really wanted to do was um, tell you that one of the best tools, I think, to make it through some of that uh, late stage concepting through that discipline um, in that process is sketching. Uh, rapid visualization is what I would call it. And that is not really drawing, okay? It's not illustration. Um, really has very little to do with illustration, um, but it is about capturing what is in your head in a visual way so other people can see it as quickly as possible, okay? There's a lot of ways to do it. Um, I'm gonna teach you a way that I think is fastest and easiest um, and to give you a, a place to get started, okay? And so we're gonna talk about sketching and the role that it plays in that discipline process. Um, and think about it this way, it's not that you have to sketch in order to design a product, it's that you have to, um, you have to talk before you design a product. You have to communicate with your team. You have to try lots of different things, okay? And sketching is really just a tool that serves that communication process, okay? Don't think of it as, oh, and now I have to do some drawings, you know? Think of it as we're, we're, we're working on product ideas here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to communicate and share thoughts. Um, so you have, you have uh, I don't know, there's a sociology involved, there's a psychology involved there. You're working with a team of people, so... Um, the moving around and the hand waving, um, being able, having a good enough vocabulary to say what you need to say succinctly, all of that is just as important as the sketching, okay? The concept is quickly communicating what is in your head, all right? Not, not having bias, uh, not being so proud you hold tight onto your ideas, you know? Getting in with what you want to say and getting out, all of those things matter too, okay? We're not going to talk about those today. Um, uh, that's more of a class on uh, collaborative design, but... Uh, just keep in mind, sketching is really just one piece of that whole program, and it really is about communication, rapid visualization, okay? Um, so I wanted to also say that uh, when y you guys are doing a computer automated design and you're doing, a, uh, you know, your deep engineering disciplines, um, I think sketching really is a necessary skill to go along with that. Um, to me, sketching is valuable uh, for a few reasons. 
when you're doing a, a portrait of somebody, okay, when you're doing a, a drawing of someone's head, okay, you're not going to um, start with their left ear, okay, and you're going to draw that left ear in great detail until it looks perfect, and then you move across and you do their eye, and then you do their nose. You end up with some wacky looking face when you're done, okay? That's not how you draw something. You draw it by Here's an oval that is this person's head, and here's a couple small ovals that are ears, and here's my ratio lines, and I can put in their eyes, all right? And you, and you go over the entire image that you're drawing in multiple layers very rapidly. That's how you make sure when you're done, you've ended up, you know, in the right place, okay? I think portrait illustration is a, a, this good metaphor for, you know, rapid visualization. You don't want to design a product and start with you know this one little gearbox and make this perfect and then figure out how the axle comes out of that and then figure out how the drive is built onto that. That doesn't make sense. You end up with some wacky product when you're done, right? You conceive of the entire thing and all of its individual volumes and mechanisms and then you go over that entire thing again with a little bit tighter you know, perspective and you go over the entire thing again. And that way, as you're putting deep investment later on in the process into executing those items, you know that they all work and they all fit and work together. Does that make sense? So that's where I think sketching comes in. I also think it's valuable um, <clears throat> in terms of um, thinking of lots of ideas at the same time. Um, in psychology, they call this uh, chunking. Okay? It's the way people think. Um, chunking just means that all of us have brains, and you have a portion of your brain that works kind of like RAM in a computer. It's like the short-term cache of your brain, and it's where you process ideas. And most human beings can process about five to seven ideas at one time. Okay. In other words, I'm having a conversation with someone. Uh, maybe we're talking philosophically about something. Once that person throws out more than five unique thoughts, I start getting lost and feeling confused, right? But up to five to seven, I can kind of think of all five at one time, okay? Uh, and there's real value in thinking of multiple things at one time. That's how you, that's how you process, okay? Uh, it's how you create insight and new thoughts is how you compare things to other things, okay? So sketching allows you to do that, right? Because... Um, in about uh, 10 minutes, I can show you and I can think through myself, you know, 10 or 20 concepts. So all of those concepts are floating around in our heads together, and you start, you, you, your insight uh, flows more readily after that, okay? So sketching is valuable, I think, because it compresses down that time. If I um, am stuck having to build a CAD model, even in a rapid visualization form, like... Uh, you know, Rhino or Maya or something that's supposed to be a little bit faster form of solid modeling, you're still talking, even if you're really good at it, you're still talking 10 minutes, 15 minutes for a solid model, virtual model. So you're, by the time you're done with your second one, you're kind of forgetting that first one, right? You, you don't really work collaboratively in a team. It's not fast enough, you know? People can think of five to seven ideas in about 20 minutes' time before they start to forget. So you want to fill that. And sketching is one of those tools, once you get good at it, that, that's possible to do. Maybe someday computers will speed up. Maybe someday someone will figure out an interface. Maybe Dr. Romani will figure out an interface to get those two things to work fast enough together that it can uh, allow chunking. But right now it's a little too slow still. So that's where sketching comes in. Does that make sense so far? Um, okay, I also think one of the nice byproducts of, of sketching a lot is um, it improves your ability to think spatially. Now, I would assume most of you are pretty good at that, right? You're probably exceptionally good at that because you've seen solid models and you've spun solid models and you understand, you know, X, Y, and Z axes and all of that for years. You've looked at those things. Um, but when you're doing it really quickly and you're trying to, you've got a concept in your head for this product and you're trying to draw it in two minutes on a piece of paper, you have to immediately spin it in your head to an angle that is going to actually be clear to someone else and uh, then sketch it, okay? So y the discipline of, of three-dimensional sketching, I think, makes you even better at spatial pre-visualization, okay? Uh, and that's really valuable for a lot of ways. Um, one of the most valuable ways is, um, is um, uh, volumes, okay? So you're working on sub-assemblies for something. You have multiple volumes involved, and you're trying to sort of conceive of how those volumes might fit together. Um, that's kind of hard, right? So you could model them up really quick, and you could show where the interference lies, but um, if you could just kind of imagine what that volume truly looks like in three dimensions in your head, or you could quickly extrapolate that out to a two-dimensional um, space at just the right cross-section, 
uh, even more quickly you're going to get to subassemblies fitting together. Okay, so it helps you because uh, it's fast. You know the way you would do an illustration, the entire thing. It helps you because it allows you to chunk multiple ideas down at one time, and it helps you because it improves your spatial previsualization, especially as it pertains to volumes. Okay. Um, let's see. Leonardo da Vinci actually created the concept of rapid visualization, as far as anybody knows anyway. We look at his drawings and say he was awesome at drawing. To him, it was a tool he was creating. He's like, i got to figure out how to think about this thing. I have to show this to other people. So much of the tools that we use in perspective, um, in volumes, all, a lot of the, even, even some of the uh, very sketchy related stuff that we still do today, not just the illustration. It really comes back to Da Vinci's kind of stuff. He created a shorthand for himself. He created a, a sketch tool for himself. I just think that's kind of cool. We still use his techniques. So, like I said, the goal here really is to show it's in your head, okay? So it's really important that you can picture it in your head, and then you look at a blank piece of paper, and here's the key, right? You picture it on that blank piece of paper, and then you kind of just trace what you picture there. Okay, that's like really hard to describe. Um, if you're not familiar with that, but um, I was just telling Dr. Ronnie before class of uh, a quote from Michelangelo, you know, famous sculptor. He said, uh, you know, when I sit down to sculpt a horse out of a block of stone, I look at this block of stone and I take away everything that's not a horse. You know, that's really good. He sees the horse in there. He's just trying to get rid of the stone that's around it, you know, but he sees it in there before he even starts working. Um, I think that's pretty cool, and so that's true when you're sketching, I think you, and that takes some practice, right, for sure, but instead of just touching the paper with your pencil and start moving it around and try to kind of draw, as, to conceive as you draw, um, doesn't work as well as picturing what that thing is going to be and then just drawing it out, okay, and that's really something that comes with practice. Um, and, uh, and, and that's really what I want to emphasize today, too, is, is, is the skills of sketching really is much about practice. I'm going to give you as many quick, dirty sort of tools as I can or just super crash course. You know, I'll give you years of experience that I've had practicing this thing in like 20 minutes, all right? So I'll give you the quickest version of it I can. Um, but really, even if I talked, you know, all semester long, it is really going to be about your participation in practicing that discipline. There, there truly is some muscle memory involved. There's... Um, uh, you have, getting familiar with your tools uh, it really is the process of practicing. You may not ever care to be an awesome sketcher, but if you want to be, there's really no shortcuts than practicing it very frequently, okay? So uh, I wanted to show you first, before we get into uh, some exercises, um, some of my experience in sketching. I just threw together this, this thing. This is some quick ideas. Um, I don't know how to fit this on here. So this is... Uh, the tree at the Trones Museum I told you guys about. You know, this is my first sketch I did for that tree. I'm like, hey, this would be cool. Let's build a giant tree up there in that room, you know? And so, of course, you probably want to climb on it if you're a kid, and we need some stairs inside because these kids are going to be five, and maybe there's, like, some hand puppets that pop out of these holes. And um, so I started with this, and I probably did, uh, oh, man, probably 500 sketches of what this tree might look like, you know? over the course of maybe two days, maybe three days, okay? And they were just at this level. So this sketch maybe takes, I don't know, a minute, okay, to, to throw together just to say, how about a tree that kind of looks like this, all right? And then uh, people kind of liked the idea, so I drew this up. Slightly more illustrative, but I used some gray markers in here to give it some volume. I put some people in here for scale. I'm starting to kind of give some hints on materials. Um, and uh, see if people still kind of like this concept. So I maybe did 100 in marker like this, okay? And this is maybe, I don't know, three minutes, okay? Four minutes at, at the most. Um, and, it, you know, then you do some details of it. Here's what it might look like from a low point perspective. Uh, there's, you can now start to see the ladder. I'm starting to use some call outs over here on the side um, because I can write one word and draw an arrow instead of having to draw a whole other, you know, so that might take me 10 seconds but it might take me a whole other minute or two to draw just this area closer, showing what this viewport here might be. So you can use combinations of arrows and things in sketching. Um, then I did a, oh yeah, here's another perspective I thought from a pie, this is what that might look like, and now you can see my viewport over here a little bit more. You know, you're adding some more details in. Uh, and then I grab little pieces and I start doing 
you know, sketches like this, okay? So it's still very sketchy, but I get my ruler out, and we start looking at, hey, wouldn't it be cool if there was a bird on the side of this tree, and you pull his head back, and it's a woodpecker, but instead it hits a chime, you know? And every time the woodpecker hits this thing, there's, there's three or four chimes that are all in accord, you know? And uh, kids can come up and pluck these woodpeckers' heads. And so I just, I don't know, that would be neat. So maybe that is done with a spring, and maybe that spring is just cemented into the tree. And here's what my bushings would need to be if I, if I get that tine to work. I would need a strike surface. So this is sketching, okay? You know, so this whole page, again, you know, talking two minutes, three minutes, you know, maybe four since I had to use my ruler. But it just gives a very early idea. And I, you know, again, there's probably 500 of these concepts, okay? I think we picked maybe 20 or something actually ended up in the tree. This one was not one that made it in there, okay? But these are just sort of fun things you could do. Uh, so that was the tree, okay? This is a, I just wanted to show you guys some of the color stuff. This is a super quick thing I did uh, about a, a top that was really a pen, okay? So I just wanted to show you, you, know, you can throw some colors in there to make it come alive a little bit more. And here again, I'm doing some really quick and dirty uh, assemblies of how this thing might be put together. Just the first thought off the top of my head here shows a really quick kind of procedural sketch, which we'll talk about in a moment. You know, here's a kite. Maybe it's a spiral, so it so it uh, rotates as the wind blows. Wind kite rotation. Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to show there. Um, and that's what some color things look like. This I thought it'd be fun if you had like a big cannon that launched stuffed animals. So, uh, you know, they didn't go for this one. I guess they're worried you'd put your little sister in there or something. But um, so, again, same kind of thing. Super quick sketch. In fact, I don't even think, I almost didn't show you guys this. I don't really like the way this cannon looks. It's like kind of sloppy. And uh, the perspective right here is not exactly right. Can you see that? But, um, but I still threw it in here just because I liked it shows here. Guy leaning down, pulling cannon, thing launching, you know. Um, again, really quick concept of how it might be put together. All right, I gotta say, this, there's some kind of theory behind this, right? But you know, you spend 30 seconds coming up with what this thing looks like at this point. Uh, here's a product I was doing. This was for uh, Motorola, and um, we were working on little interfaces. Um, these are like little, uh, uh, you know, this was years ago, right? So they're more volumetric than they would be now, but um, these would be like uh, tiny computer monitors, essentially, for video games and things. Um, but I just wanted to show you, this is, a, a, this is another style, this is using pen work and marker, and I'm just trying to show conceptually some different things that you could use. This one I make a note to myself after I draw it, oh, that would not be ambidextrous, so that might be a problem, okay? So, um, you know, for this project, I don't think I have any more in here. I mean, again, I probably did 500 of these over the course of a couple of days, um, and in this project, we didn't pick any of them, so I went back and did 500 more with a different concept, okay? So sometimes that happens, all right? Uh, this is one, uh, <clears throat> I had this concept, this is something I was thinking one day, um, I wanted to use compliance in uh, cardboard materials uh, to be able to measure distribution out of a tube, okay? So this might be like uh, some medicine that comes in a tube, and you know, there's four um, uses in that tube, and being able to invert the material uh, allows you to uh, distribute that medicine appropriately. This is how this thing might look when you fold it. Um, we pitched this to a um, to a uh, condiment company to see if uh, they might want to use it for like ketchup packets and things like that. Okay, using compliance. Here I had to draw a hand in because um, that was really necessary to show scale and how you're grabbing this thing. Um, I don't like to do that because it's usually pretty slow to draw anything that's human. So I try to avoid that if possible. But this is when I had to do that. Okay. This I threw in there to show you. This is done on Rhino. Most of you are probably familiar. So it is possible, and these are silly designs. These were just really an exercise, okay? These weren't anything I was producing. But here's a, a little sketch of what this little organizer thing might be. Um, and then you throw this together in Rhino in, you know, you know, an hour. And it just gives you, some people, you know, like to see the actual thing with lighting and materials applied, all right? Same concept over here, just... This is a, a Weeble salt shaker, all right? It shows motion. Um, this is the original sketch there for that. Uh, I threw these in here just to show you some more ideas of color. Uh, this was a project I did for a toy company looking at um, footballs. Okay, so here's a foot, the idea was a football that is a dart gun, 
okay, which, I, you know, I'm not sure is such a great idea, but uh, Nerf was interested in something that used their two le leading sellers, right? So here's how a football could be a dart gun, all right? Some general ideas, some flexing joints. Here's another way that it could be a dart gun. Uh, I'm using um, uh, translucency there just to kind of show how your hand might grab it. Uh, there's some perspective, two halves of a football. This is pretty impractical from an engineering perspective. Some kind of giant cannon that comes out of this half of the football, okay? Um, this was one that was, uh, this was a fun project for me. It was the first time I had worked with uh, uh, Hot Wheels style cars. So we were doing several things here. We were building a, a track uh, that had these air piston powered jumps. Um, so you could launch these motorized cars down this track and you could pound on this thing and it operates these pistons and it launches your car or you could choose not to launch your car to see if it could wreck. Um, but what was really fun about this project is uh, there's um, one of the fun things with Hot Wheels track is the geometry of it, right? There's the, the what do they call it, crisscross crash. You guys remember that one? There's this X in the middle of the thing, right? And that's like where all the action happens. So we were trying to beef up crisscross crash and we figured out that you could use a hexagonal geometry and you could do all these crazy, I mean, look at this guy, right? That's like crazy. But all of these vertices, all these intersections are made with just this one hexagonal piece of track. Um, and you can do all these things. So I would still consider this sketching, even though what I did is I cut out all of my individual geometries and I laid them on the copy machine. You know, then I moved them around and I copied again, I moved around and copied again. So I'm making, you know, dozens of copies uh, faster than I can sketch them. It's still pre-visualization. I don't have to use a pencil and paper, right? But I very quickly can show my manager, look, there's like 50 things that we can make with this piece of track. I think it's worth prototyping and pitching to some, to some uh, Mattel people, okay? Um, and then I put a couple things at the end here to show you. We're not going to talk about this kind of stuff in here, but if you're interested in, in sketching, then you can do some illustration. This is where you're starting to get to the point where the length of time it takes to do this is close to what you can do in a computer these days if you're good. Okay? So this isn't necessarily something you need to do, but some people like to see the hand done work and the feel of that. Um, it, there are some advantages. You can do overlays and, and stuff on it a little bit easier sometimes than you can in software. But I just zoom in there to show you this is like the second evolution of a sketch related to a Nerf gun. Okay? And, you know, obviously I'm adding shading and color and colored pencil work. And, you know, this is maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes, 10 minutes if I'm on a good day, right, or had my coffee that morning. Uh, again, here's a, like a remote control, not quite as fancy as this one, but it's the second level. I'm using multiple shades of gray, a couple different kinds of uh, colored pencils. Um, and, you know, this is maybe, I don't know, five minutes, okay? Another one, you know, this is... Um, this was actually a microscope, um, or it looked like a microscope for this boy's product uh, that could also be used to shoot projectiles. So uh, this was really, again, using slightly more three-dimensional work and taking slightly more time to put it together, okay? Um, I have a few more I'll show you. I'll go quick, but I just think these tell the story better than I can, so... This was uh, for some the girls' line product. I was telling you about this. This portfolio has two products I wanted to walk you through. So these are the very early sketches um, of these uh, caboodles type things, right? So these were an interesting project. These were essential for sketching, okay? Because they're volumetric. They have lots of moving parts, um, and so uh, it was very important to do some three-dimensional spatial sketching on them. So stuff like this, right? So this shows maybe it's a, a, a disc that has individual compartments that rotate out, and so it kind of looks like a flower, okay? This is the first flower sketch, and um, you can see my manager's writing notes on here for me. Um, and, uh, I, you know, again, hundreds of sketches at this level trying to figure out sort of what would just be cool, what would be interesting volumetrically for this project. Um, evolved into something like this eventually. The petals fold out. It has ribs molded in that just reinforce the, the flower look to it. So what it might look like closed, okay? And again, I'm starting to apply some notes on there. Through holes, right, is what that says. Uh, here's a sculpting line to show there's just maybe some more interest on the surface. Concepts like that, okay? Uh, it's another one. thought if we made a butterfly, the body itself is the hinge. This is how that hinge 
um, pieces might come together, the ribs form the veins and the butterfly's wing, okay? All these products were actually manufactured, so I can show you these things. Uh, here's another one. This is what it looks like open, just showing some of the different things that could be in there in a different body shape. Here's another one. <clears throat> this one kind of showing it folds down, and these drawers open, and... Uh, this is actually a relatively complex uh, sketch for the sketch level, but it had a lot of different moving parts, so I wanted to show them all in one drawing, okay? And again, there's probably, you know, four dozen more drawings, maybe, probably more than that, probably 50 more drawings um, that are, uh, uh, that are um, just details of this thing, okay? Here's, like, how the closure might work. Now, this was interesting because uh, this is one where I, I would have loved to have a, an engineer on my team early on so we could start concepting together on it because, um, you know, here I'm having to use a key to show what's actually happening in the drawing, and that's kind of a slow, sloppy way to do it. I just, there's just no other way I could think of to quickly conceive of how this closure might work, okay? So I'm trying to do a cross section and a little key off to the side there. So, uh, you know, here's a little bit tighter. These are still sketches, but I'm using my ruler here and starting to look specific kind of wall thicknesses. You know, more, some more engineering, uh, pseudo-engineering work, okay? Uh, you know, here's a hand sketch of it, uh, again, getting really specific. I can take this to my manager now and say, start researching, you know, th these kinds of makeup, these kinds of things that fit in this case, okay? Uh, here's showing this little door, clasp. Again, this is like I'm saying, this was, this was tough to kind of conceive. So what I'm doing here is, uh, here's the volume of the case, you can see the edge there. And I'm showing how this closure uh, is a dotted line, meaning it's, uh, you know, I'm sort of looking through the case. Um, so you can kind of get what's happening there. I'm trying to show motion. I'm even, at this point, I, I personally like to start concepting the engineering early, and so I've got screw bosses and, you know, the recess built in and some things like that at this stage, okay? Not, every, not all designers go into the engineering depth at this level, but I like to. Here's a marker rendering, just make sure we're on the right page still. We start getting some early prototypes back from the factory um, and uh, working on fits and finishes at this point, okay? We start building some solid models and say, do we still like this, the way this thing looks? Um, I just threw this in here to show you, uh, this is that final product, if you can see that very well, but uh, this is um, what it looks like in execution, okay? It's called... Uh, Hair party pizzazz is what this one was, <laughs> okay? Uh, here's a packaging for the butterfly. Here's that thing I showed you guys yesterday, or Tuesday. Okay, this is another project. I, I think I showed you guys that watch. So here's one of the early uh, designs for it. Okay, so this is uh, concepts for this thing. Same kind of thing, right? It, it's, it's got this 32-bit uh, screen, or I think it was a 16-bit screen, actually, and it... Uh, it needs to be small enough to kind of hold in your hand was the original idea, all right? And so all kinds of ways you could do that, right? I mean, dozens. Of, I mean, I probably did a, a thousand sketches for this project, okay? Because it was so open-ended. You know, it was small enough to fit in your hand and has a screen incorporated. You know, I mean, that's pretty much it, right? So we, I was all over the place on this thing. And um, some different things. I was trying to pull in some reference visually. Um, okay, this one I liked, right? You've got a body and you can add different elements onto it. We ended up on watch. I uh, thought that made the most sense. I did a color rendering just so early on we could start, you know, talking about it and passing around what this final product might look like. Went to some 3D stuff. Oh, yeah, and then this is a different product. I thought this would be cool. You, you stick a bunch of mashed potatoes in there and you can, like, you know, shoot your mashed potatoes like a gun. We called it Food Fighter. Uh, never made it to market, of course, uh, but this is SolidWorks. I'm trying to do like a quick sketch in SolidWorks of what that might look like. Uh, this is like a fishing game. It looks like a fishing rod. It's got a computer screen on it there. This is a, a, a redesign of the Rock'em Sock'em robots, um, just a more modern version of those. This is that robot. Okay, I threw this in here just to show you, too. This is illustration at this point. Um, I don't really uh, think this is necessary for you guys, but this is the next evolution of that, okay? This is maybe, you know, 20, 30 minutes to illustrate that. But sometimes it's important, right? I can do this illustration in 20 minutes, and I can take it to somebody and say, it's very clear to someone in marketing, you know, in my company, or, or someone like that, 
what this thing is and how to be positioned in the market. You can even pitch something at this level to a buyer, right, to, to Walmart or someone and say, what do you think of having some of these? Is it worth our development time? Okay. This is an RC car. That same kind of thing here, right? You can throw some color on it if you want to spend a little more time on it. Um, they liked this concept at the illustration level, so I added color just because the computer guys were busy that day, right? So that's what some of the sketches look like. So um, this is where um, I wanted to uh, give you guys some tools, and we'll do some practice, okay? So I'm trying to get my tools down to, like I said, the bare essentials that I think are valuable for you guys, all right? So for me, this is, this is the bare essentials. A pencil, okay? Um, and it sounds silly, but this is my preferred pencil. Okay, I spent years trying different pencils, and this is what I have to tell you is that uh, watercolor pencils is my, is my uh, recommendation. Okay, they are designed for um, uh, illustrating on watercolor paper and then adding water to and just kind of bleeding the edges out. But why I like them is you can, uh, with uh, the lead is really soft, so you can get lots of different, you can do really thin lines and you can do really thick lines. And if you want, you can wet it. And you can get super thick lines, okay? Um, and the blue is nice because uh, for some reason, blue just sort of visually recedes when you're sketching. So all your slop lines, you know, just kind of disappear. And when you're Xeroxing, it doesn't show up at all, okay? So blue watercolor pencils is my recommendation. This is just my personal choice, okay? Different guys will use different things. Um, and then I like to use Sharpies because they're readily available. Um, and I use a thin line Sharpie and a thick line Sharpie. Um, and I like to just use printer paper because it's readily available. Don't spend a bunch of money on fancy sketch paper. You know, you want to just go through hundreds of these things, right? So you buy some cheapo paper. So if I had to get my tools down to the bare essentials, okay, I would say white copy paper, blue watercolor pencil, a couple thicknesses of black Sharpies, okay? <laughs> you can add more things to that. I actually carry this little kit with me, um, and I put in my kit, uh, you know, here, I'll put it up here. Same kind of stuff, right, but I add in a sharpener and a uh, eraser. I use a white pencil sometimes to do some highlights over top of my Sharpie lines, um, straight edge, okay, a few shades of gray markers. This is still, like, pretty basic, right? I mean, I have a whole tool chest at home filled with markers and, and additional tools and templates and things, but this is bare essentials. This is also pretty essential, okay? Um, so what I wanted to do is... Give you guys some tools, okay? So if you're if you're at home, uh, you can go grab some of these, uh, uh, whatever you can find, pencils, paper, um, and we're going to pass some of these out to you guys, okay? So join if you could, please. I want to give everybody one of those, okay? One of these, and some white paper, all right? Um, and those are yours to keep, okay? I want to give those to you, so you have no excuse that you don't have the perfect tools to sketch with, okay? Um, those are great tools, all right? And thank you to Jordan for picking those up for us. Um, so this is what I want to talk about. Uh, I'll give you some quick and dirty sort of things. So pick your tools, stick with the same tools, throw them in your bag, carry them with you everywhere. You don't want to switch around tools a bunch. Yeah? Hey, just uh, sure. on-campus students, um, hey, we have a... Um, study uh, going on in this area, so students will just come and take pictures of what you're drawing. It's not going to be used for your grading, and just use use a number on your sketch, so we won't even know who you are, and I won't tie it up with your grade, so don't, don't worry about it. And uh, there's a research student in our group who's going to be using that, and he's not connected with this class at all, and we have this IRB approved, so just wanted to let you know that we are using some uh, pictures to guide our research in this area, so thank you very much. Yes, thank you. So um, someone will be going around taking pictures judging how good your drawings are, okay? No, just kidding. Um, so uh, I'll just tell you a few, a few uh, really quick sort of... Uh, dirty things, all right? So one of the things I like to do is uh, use Boolean operations a lot, okay? I use Boolean shapes, I use Boolean volumetrics a lot, okay? So if you're drawing, um, so uh, what's a good example of that? If I'm drawing like a, uh, a bulldozer, okay? I'm going to draw a three-dimensional uh, rectangle, 
Okay, this is a two-point perspective, which just means the lines recede going this direction and the lines recede going this direction. Usually two-point is best for any object that's like the size of a toaster to the size of a car. You go up to like a building, you have to go three-point perspective because you're standing in front of it and it gets narrower as you look up, okay? Uh, it doesn't really matter, okay? But this is what I'm drawing. I like to start with a square. And then, um, uh, and if I'm gonna put wheels on the thing, then I just, I build in some shapes in the side. Uh, here's a cool trick I'll show you about circles. It's amazing how many professional designers don't know this, okay? When you're drawing a circle in perspective, the minor axis of the ellipse, okay, a circle is always gonna look like an ellipse, right? Um, if you're not looking directly on it, all right? The minor axis of that ellipse, the one that goes perpendicular, the shortest direction, always lines up with the axle in perspective, okay? So here's a car, and here's my axle. The minor, is, it doesn't feel right at first, but the minor axis of that ellipse always lines up with the axle. See what I'm saying? Now it looks like that wheel's actually attached to that volume, all right? So here I'm putting wheels on this thing, and if this is a, a bulldozer, maybe instead it's, it's actually treads I'm putting on. We'll need one over here. So my wheels have to be in two-point perspective as well, so that's a little bit smaller. Okay. And you see how I'm, I'm pretty sloppy with my lines. Uh, it's okay, it's blue pencil. This is the value of this stage. I'm not sure exactly where that circle needs to be, so I just kind of slap it in there, okay? And then I can go back through a little bit darker with it later when I'm like, I know that that one right there is the line that looks right, so I can go a little darker with that. Um, Okay, so then I, cu I kind of cut into that volume, and we put a little bit of a, a hood on this thing. Okay, you see that? I know that the front of the hood is perpendicular. I know the edge drops down. Um, we'll put a windshield on there. That has to stay in my, in my perspective. We'll put a little, uh, here, let's make it just kind of fun-shaped. I'm getting up higher on the object, so my two-point perspective, my lines, see that? It goes down a little bit more than this line does. But if these go out far enough, they eventually will all connect to a point, okay? Um, I can put <coughs> windshield on this guy. I'll also tell you that um, there is, here, let's make that a little more fun. Um, that hood perspective isn't exactly right, but it'll work. Uh, let's do a scoop on there, so it looks like a bulldozer. So again, I'm building in a volume. I know the back of that scoop is parallel to the front of that cube. The bottom of that scoop is flat to the ground. And I can put in a, you know, a side on it. Right. I've got uh, circles that are in this direction, so the minor axis falls in line with what the axle would be in that perspective, okay? And then you can go in and detail this guy, right? Let's give him uh, some kind of, let's give him a couple pipes on there, right? And, um, I'll also say that when you're sketching, it's not really about where the tip of your pencil is, okay? A lot of people think that it's, uh, it is, uh, use your upper arm, okay, more than you use, like, your fingertips, okay? So, uh, I can, you can draw a line quickly and straight. For me, it's always, this is called a seven, uh, number seven line. Basically, it's just an angle going up that direction, okay? I can draw that kind of from my shoulder. I'm not really moving my fingers or my wrist. I'm barely moving my elbow, but I'm drawing from my shoulder, okay? So that gives me a really straight line because I'm not moving hardly anything else, okay? Uh, but if I keep my wrist in place and I try to draw that same line like with my fingers, it's really hard to do and make it look straight, you know what I'm saying? So you make these sweeping lines or you can add a little bit of wrist to it and you get a nice kind of curve, right? If I want to make a line Going this direction, I like to, to pull, right? Just because I, I know the physiology of my shoulder works better pulling, okay? Works better pushing. Um, so I make most of my lines from like kind of down here to up here, okay? So, if, so I turn my paper. In fact, this is really bad because I've got this little brace here and the height of this table is, is higher than, really gives, allows me to get my shoulder on top of it, okay? But what I really like to do is is flip my paper around a lot, okay? So if I'm drawing um, a cube, right? I'll see how I turn my body, and I try to draw all my lines pulling from my comfort, be able to use my shoulder. See what I'm doing there? And I can make those lines a lot straighter 
than if I'm just using my fingertips, okay? That takes some practice too, right? And there's some muscle memory involved in that, but don't be afraid to like use your whole arm and like think about how your whole arm is moving, even the position of your torso to get some real straight, quick lines, okay? And you kind of make them all really the same direction. You're just turning your paper as you go for the most part, all right? So I wanted to say that. Um, let's see, Boolean shapes. Uh, yeah, corners, okay, now this is interesting. Corners matter the most, okay? Make sure you nail your corners, your vertices, um, because that's what your eye sees, all right? If you get your corners exactly right, what your lines look like don't matter as much, right? I could be a little bit sloppy here. You see I got a bunch of extra lines in there, but you don't really see those, right? As long as this corner here is in the right spot, you're like, oh yeah, that's clearly a rectangle. Does that make sense? Just some weird thing about the way we perceive objects. Okay, so make sure you nail your corners. Second most important thing is your, is your edges, especially your vertical and your horizontal edges. Okay, you get your edges right, those are really important too. Then you start putting in like, you know, your shapes on the side and doing some other kinds of curves. And those don't have to be exactly right as long as your edges and corners are, okay? So corners, edges, and then other lines in that priority. Um, you can also slop in things like springs and gears and stuff like that, okay? So if I'm going to draw a gear, uh, I'm not going to go around this thing and draw all my teeth on this gear. It's really, really slow, and it's really hard to make it look decent when you're done, right? So it's a circle. Maybe you go around the edge a few times so it shows there's something on the edge, and you just say gear, okay? And that gear is rotating, okay? Um, springs, you know, if you really want to draw a spring, I think I had that picture in here, right? Uh, here, right? So this is a cross section of a spring. Circles and some lines. I'm not actually drawing a spring. It takes a long time, right? Screws, you know, I want to show a screw going into a subassembly. You know, I draw the head of our screw. And I draw, you know, in perspective. And I'm just saying, clearly that's a screw, right? I'm not really going in there and I'm not designing like a helix and I'm not getting it to show its cutaways, right? That takes forever, so. It's okay to be sloppy like that. Everybody looks at that and says, oh, that's a screw, okay? So a lot of little tricks like that. There's a lot of cartooning sort of tricks that you use, okay? Screws and gears. Um, things like arrows, all right? Use lots of arrows to show motion and direction and movement, okay? You can show multiple stages of things, like I was showing you in those sketchbooks. You know, let's say you've got a gear with like a, um, I don't know, it's got a cam on it. Right, and you know, once a rotation, you want that cam to actuate. So you show step one, and then maybe you show step two, a little bit lighter, and you say one, this gear position here, two, and you know, it moves. And if you think that's not super clear, you say cam indexes or something like that, right? And this is the little cam indexes drawing, all right? So, Think of like procedural things, like ones and twos. I like to put circles around them so they don't look like objects. Okay, my numbers. Uh, arrows. Um, things like uh, like Batman, right? So I think about it, right? So I've got this this bulldozer, and I, and I want to make it really clear that this is a, a bulldozer, right? So I want it to be saying, you know. Arr! like a engine going, right? So I make that really clear. And, uh, you know, maybe I show that the whole thing is shaking a little bit, you know, as it's going. So there's like cartooning involved in that, right? Um, I come in here and I, and I, and I put a, um, you know, like I said, Batman style kind of call outs on this. Um, There's also, you can also do uh, blow-ups. Okay, this is how I like to do a blow-up. So let's say I take, um, I don't know, the space inside one of these wheels I feel like isn't quite working right. So I like to put a circle around it, come in here with a larger circle, and then I connect the tangents of those. 
and I say this is what that wheel really looks like up close okay and I can show the edge of my track and I can show the interior dimension okay and I do a little shading to show it's got additional detail there All right so I'm using this I, I would call this a blow up section okay these are like I said cartooning things you have blow ups you have batmans right you have um, arrows in motion you have kind of procedural steps that you do um, you're slopping in gears and springs these are all like ways to go quicker with it right um, so now that I, I know I've, I've got generally what I like here I can go back through I can darken the lines that I know that I like <coughs> Um, I'm not going to go through all of this to save us some time, but so maybe I, I want to show that windshield's flat and it's got some glass in it. I can do a little cartoony glass look. This pipe's definitely got something cool going on in them. Okay, so now I can take this to somebody and I can say, okay, what's working here? What's not working here? Do you get it? It's a cute little bulldozer, right? It's got some treads on it. I can start making call outs on it. I can say, you know, this is, you know, rubber. Um, I like to use these little S shaped arrows, again, because they don't look like objects, they don't look like an edge of something. Um, so, uh, you know, I can say, real glass um, okay so then what I like to do is uh, uh, then I'll pick up my okay like say say the sketch I feel like is worth continuing with all right I'm two minutes into it and uh, I, I want to go another couple minutes on it and sort of uh, take it to the next level so I've got my thin sharpie out next all right and I'm doing the same thing I just did with my darker blue but I'm going even darker so now I know I like this line. I know I like this line. These are the essential lines to pull this thing together. I'm trying to not go over it as many times now at this point, but I can still be a little sketchy. Okay. I know that the inside of these wheels are important. I know I gotta get that just right. I know the scoop is really important to show it's a bulldozer. These lights are important. Okay. So I've kind of just got a little more contrast on the page now. Again, I'm, I'm really focusing on edges to make sure at least those are coming to life. All right. We're going we're gonna to say that this is dark down in there. And... Uh, then if uh, uh, what I do is take my darkest Sharpie and I go just on what is exterior, okay? And that brings it off the page. So this is the actual outer edge of the product. And with, at that level, you're not going more than one time over it, okay? That's pretty important to really, truly show your edges, okay? And then maybe I can come in here, and if I don't feel like it's totally pulled off the page, I'll try to, I'll put a vignette on it, right? And really try to bring out the blue line from the paper, Okay. Okay, so now we can say bulldozer. Make sound, maybe we have some kind of simulated smoke that comes out of this thing. And uh, I'm, I'm still at this point doing hand waving, right? Hopefully, and I'm talking about it. And I've got four or five other sketches, and I have supporting sketches just showing the edges from it, okay? So that's three dimensional sketching. I think it's fastest if you can do it that way, all right? But you might need to come in and do some. Uh, some orthogonal projections, right? I might need to say, 
Okay, I want to make sure you guys really understand that the, the back of this thing is uh, is kind of artistic right here. I want to show that that's kind of a fun curvy shape and I want to show this this creative thing I did on that window kind of comes across in the final production. So I want to show the side of it, right? And I try to figure out some way to make that really clear that, you know, we're actually at like a 30 degree sort of thing there on the back of that, okay? It's an orthogonal, right? Or I might want to show um, that the front of this thing, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with this from solid modeling, but All right, I show the width of the treads or something really quickly. It's really, sometimes it's a really quick way to do some multiple variations just with some projections like this, all right? In fact, that's probably a little bit easier way to start sketching, right? This is faster once you get good at it because I can do one sketch and you can kind of get the whole concept. But I'll still frequently do um, projections on the side. Or, uh, you know, now I, can, now I can take this and I can do five more. You know, I can say maybe it goes to the back in like a, a curved shape or, you know, maybe it's real straight. Or maybe, you know, we have a spoiler on the back or something, you know. Right, I've got, I can do that super fast in projections instead of having to go back and do all this level of detail every time, okay? So those are what I would call orthogonal projections. Um, and you can also do um, little sub, I'll call these uh, like supporting sketches, okay? So you can say, well, I know I like that scoop, but instead of redrawing that whole thing a bunch of times, I want to look at, you know, just some variations I can do in the scoop of that thing, okay? So we have one that looks like teeth, you know, we have one that looks like, I don't know, like a, like a shovel, you know, maybe on it. I know I need some shading on that because it's a little hard to read in, in a two-dimensional format. Um, or you have one that, uh, I don't know, has a, a big laser on it <coughs> and it obliterates the dirt. As it's going through, right? So, you know, I can quickly now show these multiple versions next to this sketch, and I can say, here's the concept. We could also take this bucket and we can make it like that or like that or like that, okay? Sub supporting sketches, okay? Okay, so this is what we're going to do now. Take out a blank piece of paper, your blue pencil. And I want everybody to somehow draw, okay, a jack-in-the-box. Okay, you guys familiar with jack-in-the-box, right? The box, it's a toy. You turn the crank on the side, the lid pops up, and the clown or whatever jumps out um, and says something funny and surprises the kid, you know. I want you to, to imagine you're working for a company and you're trying to get across this concept you came up with. I got this great idea, guys. It's a box. You turn the crank, and this thing jumps out um, and surprises everybody, okay? So you have to show that you're thinking that, all right? You can do it in three dimensions. You can do it flat if you want, but think of procedure. Think of these Batman tools. Think of arrows and motion, okay? And in one page, in I'm going to give you about two minutes, okay? Show Jack in the Box. You have to go a little faster. Yeah, let's do 
you guys will use procedural steps if you have to, Eris, Batman kind of thing. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, so uh, some of you got really uh, through all that really quick, okay? Um, but some of you got kind of hung up on getting uh, the crank just right or something, all right? So if you want to get the crank done super fast, box, crank, okay? Lid, thing jumping out, some kind of a spring, clown head, okay? So it's super fast on that thing, right? If you want to make it really clear, you say arrow three times equals, you know, guy popping the head out, right? That would be the quickest way you could get the concept of a jack-in-a-box down on paper. Um, I would say orthogonal is better for this project, right? You don't really need to be in three dimensions for this, um, and it shows kind of some procedural steps. That's a good example, I think, of, um, of being able to use a lot of procedural things. So here's what I want you to do now for this one. Get another blank piece of paper out. You should use a different page. Blue pencil. I want you to use blue pencil only for this one, too. And I want you to, uh, I think everybody in here has some kind of a, a, a concept already, right? You have a product in mind that you'll be working on the rest of the semester. Is that right? At least, at least somewhat of an idea of what that might be? Is that, is that correct? No, not yet? Okay, then what I want you to do is, is, is think of a product, okay? Or pick something that you used this morning, right? A TV or a radio or something like that, okay? And I want you to draw it from an orthographic, okay, just the side of this thing. And pick the side that's most indicative, right? So if you're drawing a remote control, you're not doing the edge of the remote control, right? It doesn't give you any information. You clearly would do the buttons, right? But it would depend on the thing. You're doing a car. You want to do the car from the side. You don't want to do it from the top. It doesn't give you any information, okay? So do uh, a, a projection, a flat projection of uh, that item. And I want you to do three variations on that projection, okay? So if it's a car from the side like I was doing uh, here, okay? So car from the side, do, do three different versions on three different pieces of paper of what that object might look like from that projection. Does that make sense? Three projections of that object. Okay, go. Sorry, three, 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 it could be the same car, but three versions of it, three shapes of it, yeah. <coughs>
Feel like you've got a line that's in the right place. So carefully and push a little harder and go over it just one more time to make that one line come out. Focus on making the edges just right and go kind of light on everything else if you're not sure yet. Exactly where that line should be. I think uh, you guys went a little faster that time. That was good. You jumped into it quicker. Uh, when you force yourself to go fast, it helps you start uh, volumetrically, like <coughs> I was saying before. I think that's helpful. Um, so here's the uh, third exercise. This is the last one we'll probably have time for. I want you to try to do. Pick the best of those three, Okay, the one you like the best of those projections. And what I'd like you to do is do uh, at least three supporting sketches Okay, to somehow show some detail on that. So that's where you can do something like this, right? You're showing uh, off in the corner of the page, you know, maybe on a separate page, you don't have room. You're showing just one detail, uh, or you're doing something like this, showing the angle, or you're doing, uh, where's my other thing? You're doing a blow up like this, or you're doing sound effects, okay? So at least uh, uh, three sort of supporting sketches that shows some kind of additional detail on your favorite of those. Okay? Go. Probably at least be on your second sub drawing at the moment. I think the quickest, most logical way to convey it. If it's just flat, that's fine.
Okay, so I want to do one more thing real quick here. Um, this is what I want to do is use your, get out your, your black markers now and um, take that drawing you just worked on, okay, and go back to just the essential parts of it and uh, practice using the, your, your thin black to go over the lines one time and your thick black to go over the outer edges, okay? Try to bring it off the page a little bit and let the blue lines recede. Okay, go. very committal with that last one, right? That's where you know for sure where that line's going to be. And you go one time over it really clean. Bring it off the page. Just on the exterior of it. purposes they serve. Okay. We need to be done with that. You can go put your stuff down. That was good. Thank you guys for practicing, all right? So I'm sure that felt rushed to you, okay? But, um, but that's the appropriate amount of time, okay? It has to be very fast. It has to be conceptual, all right? Um, it doesn't have to look exactly like the thing is going to look. It's not illustration, right? Um, so yeah, some of you guys did a good job using blow-ups and call-outs and, um, you know, uh, onomatopoeia kind of stuff and uh, procedural steps. Okay, that's the way to think about this, right? You're conveying concepts. You're not illustrating what this thing is going to look like, okay? You pick the angle that you need to, that most accurately conveys what it is you're trying to do, and you just do what's simplest on that, okay? So keep those tools. I think those are, for doing this for years, those are what I would recommend. And um, carry them with you maybe all the time. You get some time, practice some stuff, uh, and use them frequently, okay? If you, if you want to get decent at this, practice it a lot, okay? Go through, put a stack of 20 pieces of white paper in front of you um, some night and, uh, and give yourself two minutes per page and get through all 20, okay? And you'll start getting a little more comfortable with your lines. You'll start thinking of new tricks um, to convey certain things. I didn't even talk about cross sections. There's a little too much detail to get into. I, I'm sure you're very familiar, but there's some sketchy ways to do that that are really useful at times. And so there's just lots of tricks you guys can teach yourselves as you go. Um, I wish you had more time to talk with you about sketching, okay? But at this point, it's a lot of practicing, okay? Um, I'll also say I'm not, I'm not going to have time to get into it today. I was really hoping to be able to talk about the, the next piece, and, and maybe this is something you're a little more familiar with even, is um, rapid visualization as pertains to prototyping, okay? So what you do after you sketch the thing, it, this takes you, you know, a couple hours of sketching. You get down to something you think is worth a couple, you know, days of prototyping, or at least a half a day maybe for your dirty prototype. 
And so uh, you're building mock-ups. And uh, there's still the same way of thinking. You're still very rapidly trying to convey a concept with a prototype. It doesn't have to be final materials, right? The majority of the prototypes we made were other toys that we like cut apart on a bandsaw and stuck together with a duct tape, you know? And you're just like, hey, look at, maybe this thing looks like this, and it does this, you know? It's a very early stage sort of prototype, and it happens sort of after and, and dovetails in with the end of the sketch phase, okay? And then you've got more advanced prototyping, which you probably are more familiar with, and that's building it to look and work like the thing is really going to look and work like. But the proof of concept, the sketch phase of prototyping is pretty exciting, too, and, um, you know, I have all kinds of crazy stories about um, some of the sketch work and prototyping that we did, too, that came after the sketch work on paper. Um, but uh, anyway, that's that next phase. So I, I just have a few minutes. I, th I thought I could take a couple questions at the end before we wrapped up. So thoughts about that exercise? You know, questions you have about the sketch process? What do you guys think? You think it could be helpful, maybe useful? You feel really insecure drawing in front of everybody? Huh? Yeah. If you make like 500 sketches of this, mm -hmm. like I, I just think the whole purpose of sketching is so that it doesn't take too long. But if you just mm -hmm. make 500, sketches. right? So yeah, you could do 500 in, you know, half a day to a day, and then you're doing maybe a half a day for your early prototype, and you're proving that the thing works. Okay, so you maybe two days in before you're spending a week building an actual prototype or you're starting to look at tool paths and things like that. Um, so you have that, you have a week invested in some R&D at the beginning. But you've got, you know, a month or two or three in early production. Uh, if you do that wrong, if you don't understand that this thing isn't going to be exactly the way it should be after three months, you got to go back and repeat that three months. And so that's what I was trying to say Tuesday, right? The discipline to be patient early on to explore lots of different directions, to knock all the junk off the front of the shelf before you jump into hurrying up to produce the thing, I think really is worth it in the end. Um, when you're ready to design it, you know you're designing exactly the right thing and it's got all the sub-features that you think are important. Um, I think it's worth the discipline ahead of time to make sure you go in the right direction. Yeah? Um, when you were a child, did you, you sketch a lot or? Not, do you artistic no, at all? I not really, you know. I mean, I do a little bit of illustration on the side, but not much. I'm much more comfortable sketching geometric things that look like they're doing something. So when did you start like getting really into sketching? I, you know, I, I don't know. I guess when I had to in college, you know. Um, and my sketching's evolved over the years, how I do it and what I do. But I mean, those those days when I had to get through 500, you know, you just it's just a lot of practice. And there's some hard days, right? You're staring at another blank piece of paper, trying to think of the hundredth way that you can design this bulldozer, and you just got to kind of force your way to get through it. So it's practicing. There's no shortcut to that. Any other quick questions, thoughts? Uh, what, what other alternative sources would you direct us for um, expanding sketching? Man, that's a great question. Um, Dr. Kudowitz and I were just talking about good materials, academic materials for teaching sketching. There's not a whole lot out there. Um, let me get the book that Barry recommended to Dr. Romani, and maybe he can pass that off to you guys. I don't know the name offhand. Um, but for me, really, it was practicing. I mean, I can't really point to something academic that I learned. In fact, the majority of the, the cartooning type things that I was describing, you just kind of make up over the years how to convey your idea. Um, I'd like to see a catalog just of those things, right? Um, I don't know if something like that is out there, but... One, uh, the one that I used was called Product Rendering with Markers. I'm going to get a link on Amazon and make a, a possible compilation of a few of them. Including, um, That'd be good. What, uh, Jason and uh, mm -hmm. That's what was used in the car. Catching class um, when I went to grad school. It's good. Yeah, and marker technique is a, a whole other thing, right? It's complicated. There's a lot of things to learn and know about marker techniques, but it's a cool look. Yeah, if I may add as well, if you go over to the industrial design department, there's a lot of examples over there as well. So, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.